So we just watched Jurassic Park for like the 15th time in our lives. What do you think? 10 out of 10. It's a millennial classic. The animatronic dinosaurs, science fiction, the dreams about what science can do. This is one of the best movies in my life. And in this was movie, it was in this movie that for the last 30 years, the pop culture has known that T-Rex, they move, their eyes are based on motion. I love it. I mean, everyone loves it. I see it. Unless you stand still. Unless I stand still. I do think about it. Uh, I give Jurassic Park a 9 out of 10. You're right. This is a millennial movie. Total nostalgia. Bring me back to childhood. The special effects, unbelievably good. And even holds up now. Surprisingly, not just holds up, is better than most special effects today. Uh, great speculative science fiction, super creative. I mean, what a premise. What a premise for a movie. Uh, it's a great ride. Fantastic. Not a perfect movie, though. That's why it's a 9 out of 10 for me. Uh, but fantastic. Love Jurassic Park. The movie starts out with something suspect. Let's watch them unload this raptor. Okay, first off, doesn't this forklift look a little topsy-turvy here? To little toppy-tippy. <laughs> Take that turn a little bit too fast. There's like dino on the side of the road. Yeah, and it's killing all these people. Mm. Pushing team, moving. Let's go, pushing team. Reasonable. Push, 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 push. Okay. okay. Green light. Okay, so notice that green light. It goes red when there's a gap. Yeah. And then it goes yellow, I think, when there's contact. Getting close. And then green must mean locked in. Green is good. But then it's not locked in, as we'll see. We're loading team, step away, gatekeeper. Raise the gate. The gate, look how heavy this looks. He's deadlifting the gate up. Why would this? It's like a several hundreds of pounds of steel and he's deadlifting yeah. it. And like, I don't think he even has a grip or a glove. It's just straight up like finger pinching this door. <laughs> and it's not a, we could go side to side. No, we're yeah. going up and down yeah. with a, with, with a mechanism, with pulleys. pulleys? No, no, no. no, no, no. We're going to manhandle it. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't, why don't they just tie a rope and a little pulley? They can just pull the thing. <laughs> like humans have been doing this for centuries, millennia. What are we, what are we, <laughs> what are we doing? doing? Look at this guy. His back is going to get wrecked. There's wrecked. That's right. This is, you only lift the door one time. Your back is wrecked. Get a new employee. Get a new employee. Ridiculous. Oh, man. Oh. It wasn't locked in. Why wasn't it locked in? It wasn't locked in. <laughs> <laughs> the light turned red. It's just red, though. <laughs> Got him. Got him. It, even if he didn't die, he was going to have back problems for the rest of his life. That was yeah. bad form. That's too heavy. That's true. Yeah. No good. Now, I do think there is some leeway for this because, like, Jurassic Park has just come online. They don't have all the procedures down. They don't have all the infrastructure in place. So some things are going to be a little bit on the fly. But that was absurd. Yeah. Why, why is there no knocking mechanism for the thingy? Why, why is the guy deadlifting the 500-pound door? Just put a hook on it. Put a little eyelet. Put a little <laughs> yeah. rope. What are, we, what are we doing? Yeah. Jurassic Insane. Park. Insane. It's interesting. Like kind of like a weird way to cheap out on things for like such That's a right. grand place. That's right. Cheaping out on safety. Cheaping out on these like critical infrastructure pieces huh. where you're moving dangerous animals around. Hmm. Crazy. So this is the mosquito. The mosquito yeah. caught an ember. An, an amber, no, it's cotton sap, which turns to amber. Mm -hmm. and so my question was like, they they drill a hole into its like abdomen, into it, its butt, and they pull out blood. But what if they just got like a bigger mosquito? Like, because <laughs> there, there were mm -hmm. giant insects back in that time, so like they could have just gotten more bugs. That's right. So the the blood and the mosquito and maybe different types of blood are all intertwined together in the mosquito. So. When you extract it, it's not just going to be like, oh, here's dino DNA and here's mosquito DNA. It's all going to be mixed right. together. Depending on whatever it drank the last, I don't know, 24 hours, 48 hours, however mm -hmm. long it digests. That's right. So I guess you could eventually create a library of different animals. And so mm -hmm. when you get a new mosquito, you're like, well, there's a little bit of animal one, a little bit of two, a little bit of three. Yeah. And you can start pulling them apart. 
So yeah, I wonder if the first couple tries at this got some pretty grotesque things growing in the eggs. <laughs> yeah, uh, like it, like you make an egg and it's just like a mixture of different dinosaurs and it's mm -hmm. just an absolute monster. Oh god, too yeah. many mouths and like. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, that's grotesque. Hmm. This is the field station where they mm -hmm. are doing the art paleontology, right? Looking for dinosaur bones and. This is cool. This is cool because I really felt like a real dick site because yeah. like the their television is this cheapy old portable but small but also really like low quality resolution and gigantic for the glass and then this super makeshift cardboard box like yeah got to get it done what do we have around us like cardboard like all right all right get some tape let's do it yeah so super cool felt very realistic Right, it did feel like that, and they were doing the radar thing where they like send the pulse of stuff down into mm -hmm. the ground and it bounces off the different types of rock. And they were just sort of experimenting with this and trying to figure it out. They have this makeshift tent. It's really, it really, really felt like a dig site. Mm -hmm. Although this didn't, this felt, this felt not like a dig site to me. This looks way too easy. Is right. it, if anybody is an archaeologist, no, paleontolo paleontologist. Right. It can't be this easy, right? Where it's just like sand around like clear, de clearly defined skeleton. I thought fossils were like rocks in rocks. And like you could, you wouldn't hardly notice unless you were really careful. That's what I thought. So this looks I've, too easy to me. I've seen videos of like really super soft brushes, but mm -hmm. also if it's super soft and you're brushing rock, like it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Where's the, where's the times and whens for a different type of brushes? Right. I guess, could it be not just rock and rock? Could it be like the fossil is rock, but the surrounding stuff is sand? Like compressed sand, super hard? Yeah, I guess that could happen. In maybe it's all rock at the beginning, but then maybe some weathering or some different conditions happen that degrades the rock around the fossil. Hmm. Maybe. I wonder if there's any skeletons that are like this that are this like clean. I don't know. You know? What's the cleanest skeleton ever? That's a good question. Yeah. Cleanest like fossil ever found, I wonder. <laughs> so Dr. Grant kind of bullying this kid, right? This is a little inappropriate. I mean, absolutely bullying. <laughs> <laughs> so he scares him with the long claw and he slices the kid, well, figuratively slices the kid's insides out. Right. He's like he even slices off the kid's dick that's at right. one point. Like what the and like, like this is not an employee. This is a kid, right? So that means his parents are somewhere here on the dig site that's, that's right. watching all this bullying happen. But imagine they're like, like not cool, but that's Dr. Grant. Like he's in, yeah. he's the boss. Like, he's the boss. Yeah. Well, I guess my kid's learning a lesson today. Seriously, don't talk back to Dr. Grant. You don't get slice and dice. Oh my god. Dino style. Yeah. Classic scene here. Let's watch. Dodson, Dodson, we've got Dodson here. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get cheap on me, Dodson. This is a cool little moment at the beginning of the movie where Dodson has to pay um, Nedry's bill yeah. to show that Dodson's company ain't cheap because Hammond is being was cheap with Nedry's pay. Now, whether that Nedry's problems are due to Nedry's personal finances or or Hammond is actually cheap, it's not exactly always clear, but. Right, as a kid, it sound, seemed like Neju was just being petty and like trying to mm -hmm. skimp out of every little thing. But actually, as an adult, I understand this as Nedry has to test the company. Are you gonna, oh, yeah. are you gonna foot the bill for everything or are you gonna nickel and dime me? Right. That's the problem. Yeah. And then of course, the classic line. Dodson, Dodson, we've got Dodson here. See, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get cheap on me, Dodson. Don't get cheap. Okay, so this is nitpicky on my account. Here we go. How does... It's not nitpicky. It's geometry. It's just, ge that's right. It's geometry. So, well, let's just watch and see what we see. There it is. Okay, so first thing is nobody in the helicopter except Hammond knows what's on the island right now. Okay. Um, the other thing is if we look at the motion of the helicopter, it's moving that way. Mm -hmm. And so that means Hammond is sitting with his back to the direction of motion, which means when he looks to his left, he's looking, if we go forward. 
He should be looking. He's looking this way to the to the back and to the rear and to the right of the plane. Right. That's so right. so he's looking to the starboard side to the rear. Right. So when he's looking out the window, he cannot be looking at the island. The island is ahead, up here, right. not not over here. So he's like he's like. There it is, a part of the ocean that I recognize. <laughs> <laughs> that means, like, when I see this wave, that means we're like two hundred yards away. Mm -hmm. And then, in addition, he's like, <gasps> "The island!" But then the people on board are like, "We don't know why we're here. Yeah, yeah, like, like, are we supposed like, to be stoked right now?" They like look out the window. <laughs> like, seems like rocks and water. Like, oh, ah, the island. Okay, yeah, the island. Yeah. yeah. Like they don't know there's dinosaurs yet. That's right. They, that's, that's right. They don't know that it's Jurassic Park. All they know is that it's like a dino park something. Right. They're not. So, he's like, why is the owner so excited about like the shoreline? <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Then of course, you know, Dr. Sadler, Dr. Grant, Dr. Malcolm, they all figure out why we're there. This would be an overwhelming experience. If you've been digging up dinosaur bones your whole life, and you've been living in your imaginative world about what it was like back in the Cretaceous and the Jurassic, and then it's here in front of you, it would just blow you away. You flabbergasted, just yeah. no words, just mind shattering. I mean, I mean, heck, yeah. even, if, even if you weren't a paleontologist, the That's fact right. that you're seeing a dinosaur in front of you, this giant thing, like. Like we regularly look at tall buildings and like mind boggling. It's so big, but like now it's alive. Right. It's just, wow. Mm. Wow. And when we were kids, God damn. Whew. So this is the visitor center. Doesn't this look a little small to you? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so there's a Jeep, like a Jeep yeah. Wrangler. And yeah. yeah, this, this place can hold like a hundred people. <laughs> this yeah. is tiny. Any more than a hundred, this little it's gonna be this little building is gonna be overly crowded, right? It's gonna be packed, right? Yeah, this it makes me interior. feel like Hammond has very good vision for the park, but then when he actually like puts the money to it where the road is, mm -hmm. it makes tiny little structure. Like it's really it's weirdly mm -hmm. cheap. Yeah, like, he says he wants the park to be for the masses and not just rich people. But in that case, you got to make this bigger. That's right, because you, if you make it for the masses, mm -hmm. but there's only like 100, 200 people that can go through the park a day. Yeah. Only the rich people are going to be able to go to this thing. Right. And there's just this one track too. I mean, so you got people visiting this tiny building and there's just one track. Right. How many sorties of the explored explorers could you do a day? Not right. that many. You, you know, this is going to be wildly expensive. Yeah. I mean, I guess it is. It could still be for the masses, but it would be like... 200 years down the future. <laughs> it's like the waiting list is like... <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, so weird that Hammond didn't spend more on the visitor center. It makes, you, it makes you wonder. Like, put a lot of money into the science, into the development of the dinosaurs in the park. Mm -hmm. But then also, like, cut in corners. Like, cut in corners on things that mm -hmm. maybe aren't obvious, but actually super important for yeah. a park. Yeah. Classic line. Let's watch. So what are you thinking? We're out of a job. Don't you mean extinct? <laughs> Just coming in for that. <laughs> so I guess, is it true that Dr. Grant, Dr. Sadler are out of jobs? Now? Interesting point. So so if Jurassic takes Jurassic Park takes off, yeah. why would you ever look at dinosaur skeletons when you could actually look at actual mm -hmm. dinosaurs? On the other hand, you Dr. Hammond has competitors. Like there are other right. companies mm -hmm. trying to do this too. And so there could be a massive boom for dinosaur paleontology to to, to get everything they can. That's right. If, if there's a bunch of Jurassic parks around the world making tons of money and they need more attractions, more types of dinosaurs, and actually, paleontology might take off. And there might be like localized parks for the, the type of dinosaurs you see mm -hmm. here are the type of dinosaurs that would have lived here, in which case funding for paleontology goes everywhere around the world. Right, right. That'd be like massive financial incentive to yeah. get like the biggest and the baddest dinosaurs. Heck yeah. The newest. Heck yeah. yeah. So maybe, maybe Time Ian Malkin quick. is here, is wrong here. Good job. Don't you mean extinct? <laughs> well, that's chaos for you. That's chaos theory. 
Actually, there's a little bit of chaos theory because you think at first glance, you're like paleontologists are out of a job. Mm. Then second glance, you're like, well, maybe. Mm. Let's watch the uh, explanation. But it's all part of the miracle of cloning. Hello? Hello, John. Well, extraction has never recreated an intact DNA strand. Not without master sequence gaps. Where do you get a hundred million year old dinosaur blood? Shh! Just one drop of your blood contains billions of strands of DNA. A DNA strand like me is a blueprint for building a living thing. A hundred million years ago, there were mosquitoes, just like today. Sometimes, after biting a dinosaur and get stuck in the sap, the tree sap would get hard and become fossilized, preserving the mosquito inside. Jurassic Park scientists came along. They extract the preserved blood from the mosquito and dino DNA. It's full of holes. And supercomputers break down the strand in minutes. Virtual reality displays show our geneticists the gaps in the DNA sequence. We use the complete DNA of a frog to fill in the holes and complete the code. So my first question for this is when I was a kid, I was like, this is awesome. Mm. This is totally possible. Is it possible? It feels possible-ish. I think so. I think it's possible. I think it's CRISPR pretty much. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What about this? Uh, I mean, wouldn't the DNA degrade over lots of millions of years? So Ooh, like you'd only point. have these tiny segments, maybe. Yeah, great point. I don't know. So I guess the question we could reframe it as like, if we were to take a drop of blood, mm -hmm. could we dry it out, crush it up, powderize it, put liquid back into it, and then do DNA stuff, centrifuge it, and be like, ah, we can recombine it. Or does it need to be in a liquid state? Or does the act of like crushing it, freezing it, turning it into, into a amber inside of um, a mosquito, like does that destroy it? My instinct is saying that maybe each process along the way might be okay, but you got 65 to 100 million years of time elapsed. That's a lot of time for stuff to degrade. And you have nothing to check it against. And you have nothing to check it. If you had like a pure sample to check it against, then that would feel doable. But I don't know, it's, it seems maybe possible, but I could also see it being like, this is just a mess of broken up DNA that we're right. just not gonna be able to do anything with. Um, I'm not a geneticist. I'm just yeah. a dreamer. Figure out how to do it. Yeah. And then there's also, I didn't realize, like, augmented reality. Oh, very Check cool. This so this was 1993 when this was filmed. Mm -hmm. And AR, augmented reality, virtual reality was, like, starting to come mm -hmm. up online. But but this was super visionary. Like, yeah. the thought about this a long time ago. Right, right. And then... Yeah, so I guess this is the extraction process. It looks a little uh, imprecise to me. Of course. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get in there with something. That, okay, it's a super fine needle, but I think it'd be even even sharper. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. there's not much, there's probably not much DNA in there, if there is any. Yeah. I mean, if you knew the gene sequence of that mosquito, you could just blend the whole thing into a slurry, and then whatever is the mosquito is just subtract it. Just subtract it. I mean, I mean, if that's even possible, if you can do that, because right, it's also analysis. it's also a prehistoric mosquito, right? Which is no guarantee there'll be there's a corresponding modern mosquito because they've also evolved. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if you're a geneticist. Tell us tell how accurate know. was Jurassic Park? Yeah. Is it like maybe someday with super super good technology possible, or is it just like mm, not going to happen? Seems seems legitimate to me. Seems plausible to me. Oh, this is mm -hmm. this is a cool scene. So part of the tour, part of the tour is seeing the scientists like working, and so it's it's like cool for the for the tourists. Like they get to see what's happening behind the scenes. But this to me feels like working in a fish tank. This feels to me like like oh, I have tourists constantly <laughs> monitoring me. Like <laughs> it's super uncomfortable. I guess I have seen this in actual museums where scientists actually have lab equipment behind like a fishbowl glass That's right. thing. That's right. Was that Chicago when you saw that? We saw it in Chicago, yeah. Again, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I wonder if that helps funding, you know, like show it to the public, get them excited. True. Funding is flowing. It like so. feels more legitimate as opposed to like some egghead somewhere said some number. Like, no, 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 you could actually see what they're doing. Right. 
Right. And I guess, oh, I get it. From the scientist perspective, it's like people finally get to see me doing my thing and like, and like appreciate. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. I see. This is actually pretty good. It's been pretty good. Plus it is an amusement, amusement park, a zoo. It's Jurassic Park. park. Yeah. <laughs> and so people would be like more than curious as to what the heck, how this That's is right. done. Cause it's so incredible. I mean, it's effectively magic. Yeah. Dr. Grant asked this weird question. We were trying to figure out why. Wait a minute, how do, how do you interrupt the cellular mitosis? Can we see the unfertilized eggs? Shortly, shortly. So why would you want to interrupt cellular mitosis? Uh, I don't know. So so first question I have is what is mitosis? What is what's mitosis versus meiosis? Yeah, so let's let's look that up. I think mitosis is the when a when a cell splits in two and has identical DNA on the, in the nucleus. And versus meiosis. Yeah, so let's zoom in here. So mitosis produces two genetically identical daughter cells from a single parent cell, whereas meiosis produces cells that are genetically unique from the parent and contain only half as much DNA. Hmm. So is this, this is like when a sperm and an egg meet, they combine to make a whole new set of DNA that's got half from mother, half from the father. Is that right? I see. So haploids combining to make a diploid? Haploid. I was going to use the term zygote. Is that right? Haploid? Haploid. Is, let's go to ploidy. Okay. Ploidy is the number of complete sets of chromosomes in a cell and hence the number of possible alleles for autosomal and pseudo-autosomal genes. Okay. Okay, so we want a diploid. Somatic cells, tissues, and individual organisms can be described according to the number of sets of chromosomes present, the ploidy level, monoploid one set, diploid two sets, triploid three sets, and so on. Ah, so humans are diploid times type of genes and so a haploid would be a sperm and another haploid would be an egg what's haploid would be half of two is one so that'd be a monoploid i guess so so my understanding mm -hmm. of this is there are different types of DNA pairings and some species mm -hmm. like humans have diploid sets of genes. Mm -hmm. Other things, I think bananas are triploids. They have like three chemical something in their DNA okay. groupings. This is this is uh, exceeding my high school yeah, biology. This is exceeding us. So the question was, why does he want to interrupt cellular mitosis to do this? You so, think you'd want to interrupt cellular meiosis right. because that's when the the genes come together in sexual reproduction. Right. So you you make you can alter those set of genes and then let mitosis go on and mm -hmm. let it replicate, replicate, replicate. Fine. Hmm. Maybe so, maybe mitosis is the better time to do it. To do the manipulation. Right. So so on one hand, if you do mitosis across a single cell, you're only done mitosis across that one cell, and so all the mm -hmm. other ones are replicating mm -hmm. the original genes, which is not what you want. But I guess you also, if you enter up mitosis, if you're able to separate one cell, then you have like the full set of genes, the full combination of whatever mm -hmm. it's going to do. And so then when you alter that gene and you put in the new gene, then it's like, you're, here's your whole thing that you're going to do, go do it. I'm not a geneticist. I have, an, I have a high level understanding of CRISPR. But I imagine if I were to do changes prior to the mitosis, prior to the final set of DNA, then if I take two haploids, which I've altered, if I combine them, will they combine in the way that I anticipated? Uh, maybe not. So in that way, then perhaps mitosis is the way you want to break it apart. And so he does say interrupt mitosis. Interrupt the cellular mitosis. Oh, let's see here one more time. Uh, how do you interrupt the cellular mitosis? So you interrupt the mitosis and then put in what you Spice want device. and then let it continue. I guess so. That sounds super advanced. Mm. That's <laughs> but, what I learned from Jurassic Park. That's what, yep. <laughs> Jurassic Park and two Wikipedia pages. That's right. That's what we learned. <laughs> he was on that question. He's on it. Yeah. He knows. Wait, he's a paleontologist. He knows a lot about cellular mitosis. Does he know a lot about cellular mitosis? He knew where to interrupt it. He knew where to interrupt That seems like an more. advanced <laughs> question, doesn't it? Yeah. Where it's like, how do you do this tech, this Jurassic Park tech? Mitosis is the place. 
Maybe his favorite reading material is just scientific journals all the time. Oh, well, possibly. Watch this classic scene. How do you know they're all female? Has somebody yeah. gone to the park, pull up the dinosaur skirts? We control their chromosome. All vertebrate embryos are inherently female anyway. They just require an extra hormone given at the right developmental stage to make them male. We simply deny them that. Life will not be contained. It crashes through barriers. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. I mean, it's classic. Yeah, he, found a way. he ends up being right, although I'm not sure he'd be right all the time. That's right. And plus, at the beginning, this guy's doing some good work. Oh, yeah. And Ian Malcolm comes in with some ridicule language. Yeah, you know they're all female. When somebody yeah. go out in the park, pull up the dinosaur skirts? We control their chromosome. All vertebrate embryos are inherently female. Is that some insecurity on Ian Malcolm's part? That's totally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm the leather jacket guy. Like, F this guy. I'm the math guy. I'm the smart. <laughs> I make the statements, but it's like the better explanation has got the scientist that actually does it. That's right. But and then, and then Ian Malcolm ends up being right. He's actually right. He's actually exactly right. They just require an extra hormone given at the right developmental stage to make them male. We simply deny them that. Life will not be contained. It crashes through barriers. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Finds a way. Wouldn't it be better to have all of the dinosaurs be male? Well, how do you figure? Well, if you have a whole bunch of females and one dinosaur somehow turns to male, you've now got a bunch of pregnant dinosaurs. Because if you have a bunch of males and one turns female, you probably have a huge fight, and then one you have one pregnant dinosaur. That's right. So it sounds like the failure mode for if the dinosaurs can change sexes then mostly dudes and one woman that's yeah that seems safe. that's going to control the population that's and let you get ahead of the problem before it blooms mm. whereas if it's a bunch of females i mean everyone's getting pregnant it's exponential growth right away that's right i mean immediate mm. instantly right. especially if they're if one female can have like five to ten eggs that's right Whew. it's a fractal it's over it's a fractal yeah yeah a fractal diagram is like one makes five those five make five these oh, five uh, make, yeah i see i see yeah, so interesting they chose to make them female instead of male. I guess it's that mechanism that he was talking about. It's just everything's female unless you give them that... that yeah, that hormone. That but then hormone. just give them all the hormone. Just give, yeah, just give them all the hormone. Yeah. You got a bunch I mean, of, I, I assume it's synthetic hormone. They're not like extracting it out of cows. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's better to make them all male. But, yeah. you know. Get them all some dino Xboxes, a bunch of... That's male right. dinos on the island hanging out, chilling. Like, That's right. Yeah. An apartment with nothing in it. It's perfect. <laughs> they, don't, they don't even need it. <laughs> it's like a lawn yeah. chair and like a beer cooler. Yeah, yeah. The dino side. Why are the dinos so chill? They don't need anything. <laughs> then there's this. The raptor pen seemed mm. weirdly built. It's It simultaneously looks super strong mm -hmm. and rugged. At the same time, very much not. Right. So you got these like strong pillars, concrete right. wall. But it's itty bitty 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 wires. Bitty wire. I mean, it's not chicken wire, but compared to a velociraptor, yeah, this thing's falling apart. And if the velociraptors are smart, they got those big claws and stuff. They can start to make some do some work on this this I mean, wire here. I mean, heck, just grab onto it, and then the velociraptor weighs I don't know, a cow is eight hundred pounds, mm -hmm. so a velociraptor is like 1,200, 1,600, something more. I don't know, heavier. And so all they have to do is grab onto it and just relax just just pull down mm. and it could probably it could probably probably totally definitely 100 percent, maybe 85 percent, rip down that wire and then just jump out right and since they're so smart they figure that out pretty quickly yep and then why is it so small that's right <laughs> that's right that's right so so can we should say like if that's a product of a person how big person? is a velociraptor i mean a velociraptor is about maybe a couple people in size yeah so this thing's very small very small. Like this is a way to get a, a velociraptor just pissed off all the time. Like all it was time. way too yeah. small. And like doing all kinds of weird behaviors like trying to break out, for example. <laughs> like the velociraptors, they tested the safety and the security of the fences. So you yeah. give it all the fences right there That's and you right. just test them all. Yeah. It's just, it's wild. It's so small. And then the feeding procedures, like what, what the heck? Let's watch.
Christoph, why did they feed, why did the Jurassic Park people feed the Velociraptors live cows? Why not kill the cow first? The cow's going to suffer. That's right. Kill the cow and then feed it to the Velociraptors. Why have it alive? I assume it's something about it's a predator and it doesn't want to eat dead stuff. It, like it wants, it wants, it doesn't want to be fed. It wants to hunt. I mean, hunters are scavengers too. Nobody wants to work for their food. That's right. I prefer just to eat it. Oh yeah, so it's, okay, it's, it's, I guess it's like a lion is like sitting on the on the Sahara, and a an antelope just like jumps in its mouth. It's like, poo. Like, no, I want to hunt. Yeah, go no, for it. Go run. It. <laughs> yeah. You want to do this? Like, all right. And they are definitely animals. If you just hand them food, they'll t- they'll take it. They'll right. take it. If a if lion is next to a carcass, it'll eat it. Actually, like humans are are good hunters. Like we've taken over the planet. Yeah. We don't like to hunt that. Like to hunt. Yeah, we don't want to hunt. It's a lot of work. When was the last time you seen a hunter get a spear? Like, no, no, I'm, no, getting a, no. I'm getting a rifle. Shoot it from like a mile away. Right. In fact, let's just round them all, all up our animals in a in a pen and then slaughter them as needed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Heck, even hunt. if I go shooting shooting birds, I get a dog to get the bird for me. That's right. But the boss raptors like it for some reason. Mm. They're freaky. <laughs> Super wasteful of this this structure of this belt thing. Find mm-hmm. some other way to drop the cow in there. Also, that scene is so good because I couldn't tell which sounds were the velociraptor and which ones were the cow. Well, that's true, yeah. Oof. I also thought, why doesn't, when they're feeding it, why don't the velociraptors just hop on out of there? Oh, it's, yeah. It's this huge thing. Yeah. See, this whole, this is whole space here. You just be like, whoop, out of come. Yeah, either grab onto the square steel bar or... Mm-hmm. Just climb up the chain thing that they drop down here. That's right. Yeah, jump onto the cow and then climb up, hop right. out, and then you eat the humans, and then off you go. Yeah. I mean, they could just lower the the lifter guy, and then the velociraptors down at the bottom, but then just climb the rope. Yeah, it's rope's not infinite. They're really struggling with these velociraptor procedures. It's weird. Like, like they got money. They clearly got money, but then they like cheap out on this. They cheap out on it. Yeah. This is the pen is small. The feeding. Procedures are weird. That wiring's real thin. Yeah, weird, weird. Mm. Now they're at dinner. Ian Malcolm has some objections to what Hammond is doing. I'll tell you the problem with the scientific power that you're that you're using here. Uh, it didn't require any discipline to attain it. You know, you read what others had done, and you and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility. I mean, this is so false. Okay, okay, hold on. Not false, but this is how everything works. That's how everything works. Like, like all of science is built up on top of other science. All of language arts, it's built up on top of other mm-hmm. arts. Like all of painting, like you don't like just make paint by yourself. Like you like build a store and buy it. Like, you're like, hey kid, <laughs> you're painting with your finger paint. Like you didn't build that yourself. It didn't, took no discipline. Right. And the, the painters of like the caveman times, they didn't paint very well. Well, they had to learn how to paint first right. from scratch, literally, you know, but now we have like, we have, tutorials and teachers that help us we don't have to relearn everything that was learned in the past according to dr malcolm here we're a kid with a gun that's right when we when we open up crack open a textbook we're standing on the shoulders of giants like what Wait, but then, but he's a chaotician phd something something right. but how did he get it he didn't discover all of math by himself that's right <laughs> he's he has to learn it from books and previous lessons learned by people. It's it's like a criticism of we're all standing on shoulders of giants, but but everyone everywhere mm-hmm. is. Right. And it's especially not true for the Jurassic Park scientists because That's they right. went to school for decades. That's right. They've worked really hard. Mm-hmm. They've contributed something really, really novel. I mean, they mm-hmm. made dinosaurs. They made dinosaurs in secret on their island. <laughs> like that that yeah. that's original as it gets. Right. So Pretty remarkable scientist. And he's like, no, 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 no. You read a book. No. I'm the math guy. <laughs> you stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could. And now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. That's a different kind of objection, which is like, 
if you have a science, should you do the science versus like take your foot off the gas? But here, I mean, they're essentially, Jurassic Park scientists are essentially making animals from the past. Is it that wildly dangerous? I mean, they have the lysine genetic mutation, which okay. means if they don't give these the dinosaurs the, some injection of some mm -hmm. amino acid every day, then they die. So safety, that, safety that's one, super safe. Yeah, they're on an island. On an island, safety two. And so, like, nothing can leave. They've got guns. They got guns. Safety three. Electric fences. Electric fences. Safety four. Concrete fences. Concrete fences. That one guy that's a hunter. Yeah. He probably counts as two to three guns. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yeah. um, they're all female. They're all female. So. You start adding all these up. This is a pretty all safe situation here. All of that was just their ideas. It wasn't like government oversight telling what to do. They're just they That's just right. actually thought about safety themselves. That's right. So Ian Malcolm here, I don't know. He seems like he's a little jealous. He's like, damn, these people That's are right. doing some good works. How can I undercut them? He's taking shots that he himself wouldn't pass. Like, did he make his own glasses? Yes, he did. Did he make his own toothpaste? Yes, he did. Okay, did he make it. his own leather jacket? Yes, he did. He did. Did he birth himself? Yes, he did. Confirmed. Confirmed. He's got a point then. <laughs> I mean, I, so I don't like his objections, but if he's consistent with them, all right. That's right, yeah. He uses this word, he says natural selection for, or he says selected, but mm -hmm. I think he does not use that right. No, hold on. This is, this is some species that was obliterated by deforestation. Dinosaurs uh, uh, had their shot and nature selected them for extinction. What? <laughs> Wait, so so we, nature selected the dinosaurs for extinction by meteorite? Yeah. <laughs> that's like that's like the most random as it can get. Like, that's not that's right. selection. Right, because you think species competing with one another in the different climates and different environments and against each other, then the top dog wins. But this wasn't that. It was yeah. a random meteor event. That would have selected anything alive at the time. That's right. Some things survived, but it was pretty random in uh -huh. the sense of what survived and what didn't. That's like looking at ants and being like, nature has selected you to extinction, like step on the ant. Like, what? what? Yeah. No. The ant's like, uh... Actually, no, 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 that's closer. That's closer because the ant wasn't able to defend itself from my shoe. That is nature, one animal competing against another. That is, yeah, that's true. This is true, like a meteor strike is about as random as that's it can get. get. It randomly takes out it's, species. It's not even like a hurricane, which kills your little species, because at least that's Earth-based. This is that's really right. like... Some object, right. some rock falls from out of the sky yeah. and like smashes everything around and you just happen to be there. Now, if, if the Earth was getting pummeled by meteorites and meteors, meteors, meteors all the time, then life would have to adapt to that environment. Okay. But this single solitary asteroid every once in a while, you know, every hundred million years, I mean, it's just not. That's not something that nature can adapt to. It's just random. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dr. Malcolm is like, uh, yeah, dinosaurs had their day, and now we're not allowed to bring them back because meteor. Meteor. Mm. Meteor. Also weird that he gives natural nature, like, he gives it, na he gives nature agency by saying that nature selects something, that it, like, chooses okay. to choose the okay. species to die. Right. It's weird, given that he's a chaotician, that he's, like, That's thinking right. about how nature does random stuff. That's a good point. You know, this randomness of chaos theory. Plays right into his analysis of asteroid Fair strikes. Enough. Yeah. Unless there's agency in chaos and how things just bounce around, that then mm. uh, no, it's inconsistent. Weird, yeah. weird, weird, weird. I like this guy, this lawyer. I love his flip where he was skeptical at first and then he's like, yeah, let's go. Like, let's make it happen. <laughs> can charge anything we want. 2000 a day, 10000 a day, and people will pay it. And then there's the merchandise. <laughs> this park was not built to cater only for the super rich. Sure, they will. I mean, what, we'll have a, a coupon day or something. I love it. Like, he's got dollars in his eyes. But actually, actually, he's like, let's make a coupon day. Let's yeah. get everyone to the park. Let's he's do working it. with it. Yeah, he's like, let's do it. I mean, you got to make money. You got you to have revenue. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, he flipped from like skepticism to like, like let is, let's go. This is mm -hmm, awesome. Mm -hmm. He might be the biggest little kid in there. That's right. He's having the most fun out of everyone. <laughs> Everybody else is like, Meh. they did Meh. science bad. And he's My like, career shutting down. <laughs> My mathematician is the best. Yeah, that's right. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> so, I mean, we don't like him, but maybe, maybe I'm, he's actually maybe I'm cool. turning on. 
on yeah. the, him turning on him. I'm changing my perspective on the lawyer. Hmm. This was interesting, which it's I didn't catch when I was a kid. I did not catch it when I was a kid. You can run this whole park from this room with minimal staff for up to three days. Impressive. I'm totally unappreciated in my time. You right. know anybody who can network eight connection machines and debug two million lines of code for what I bid for this job? Time. Sorry about your financial problems, Dennis. I really am, but they are your problems. Oh, problem. I will not get drawn into another <laughs> financial debate with you, Dennis. I'm hardly any debate at all. I don't blame people for their mistakes, but I do ask that they pay for them. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> So Nedry's having financial problems and Hammond isn't helping him at all, which if he was an, if Nedry was, an ascent, was not an essential person in Jurassic Park, you just get the next guy up. But Nedry's irreplaceable. That's right. So doesn't Hammond have to pay up and not be a cheapskate here? What's going on? That's right. Yeah, yeah. And so Hammond, the CEO, he should really build the right management team mm-hmm. so that he doesn't get cornered in a situation like this, right? Right now, Nedry has control of the entire park. Right. So he really could demand any salary he wanted. I mean, but on the other hand, he bid for this job. So like he offered, I can do this job for the lowest offer. Mm-hmm. And then Hammond took the lowest offer. At the same time, if Nedry is that competent and that essential, I mean, everything's a negotiation. I mean, also so, just take care of him. Like take care if, of him. Yeah. If, if he gets your park up and running, then that should be worth the dollar value. Hey. That's right. If you start penny pinching people and like, well, trust in the contract here, buddy, yeah, then yeah. it could cause animosity when you start lawyering your own employees. Well, it, it, it causes Nedry to go through corporate espionage and, right. and he sells out. He sells out, which causes right. this whole thing. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Nedry, would Jurassic Park have failed? There, there are some bumps in, along the road, but I think they got it together. Like, I think they would have been okay. And so, yeah. So anything new like this, like Jurassic Park, which is like a zoo amusement park thing, would have all kinds of problems. Yeah, reasonable. But I don't think it would have completely failed if Nedry hadn't done his corporate espionage. Right. And this is all caused by Hammond being a cheapskate. It's weird because he's like sunk like billions of dollars and then he's like cheaping out on a little bit of salaries. Right. Weird. Yeah, weird. Salaries and safety stuff in the visitor center. Like, but you've already you've already bought an island. <laughs> like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Put some money into the visitor center. Right. What is the term? Penny wise, but a pound foolish. That's right. That's yeah. very English. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Chaos theory. Nobody could have predicted that Dr. Grant would suddenly suddenly jump out of a moving vehicle. <laughs> There's uh, another example. See, here I'm now by myself uh, uh, talking to myself. That's that's chaos theory. <laughs> Just a great scene. What can you say? It is chaos theory. Actually, what is chaos theory? It's like... It's a complete like the the outcome of particular events in a system depend on minute changes in the starting conditions mm-hmm. yeah exactly right so i guess that applies always a great way to visualize it is double pendulum so you take okay. a pendulum mm-hmm. hang another pendulum on the bottom and it'll do some wild stunts and tricks you know, like try to line it up exactly the same every time but mm-hmm. a little bit off it does wild different stuff and maybe like the first few oscillations are pretty close the same but then after 10 or 15th oscillation is way different than mm-hmm. and you could not replicate it yeah so i guess if the tour started again and again it would go differently every time yep not every time would dr grant jump out of a moving vehicle that's right sometimes malcolm might be sitting in a different seat that's right chaos chaos dino droppings there's yeah. only one way to be positive i'd have to see the dinosaurs dropping I know. Dropping? Dropping? That is one big pile of shit. That's right. Oh. oh. You're right. There's no trace of lilac berries. Why is it like a mound? It's so yeah. odd though. Wait. How much how much droppings do these triceratops actually poop? Because I mean they're big animals, but this seems like a lot. I mean, what's a human poop to body ratio? It's Certainly a lot less than this, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, personal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is huge. <laughs> also, do we ever get a resolution to this poisoning lilac berry situation? I don't think so. I think they go off to and get in the jeep, and then mm-hmm. the problems in the park. So they go do that instead. Yeah. So it's it's not resolved. 
I nope. thought it, the upset stomach may have been because it was going through like menstruation and pregnancy stuff because they weren't the and they ruled it out because like no mm -hmm. the girl dinos can't get pregnant but I actually see. maybe yeah I see so the triceratops as well would be doing sex change sure I don't wow. know I don't know which dinosaurs had the right genes from the right frogs to have be able to do mm -hmm. the sex changes yeah you wouldn't think that every single species would be able to but I don't know I mean life uh, finds a way <sighs> QED yep Got it. <laughs> this is some stuff, nitpicky stuff that I noticed on many viewings later in life. It's not nitpicky. It's geometry. That's actually in this case, yes. So see this fence, how it it, it dives down here. Finish the fence. Finish the fence Finish all the, the way fence. all the way to the concrete. Couldn't the T Rex just be like boop 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 come in here? <laughs> like brr, brr. oh, but that spot. Yep. 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 And then where's the cliff? Here's the cliff. That they fall down, that the Jeep gets pushed or the Explorer gets pushed mm -hmm. over, which is somewhere over here-ish. I don't see a cliff. And maybe it's over the side? It says, so right over this lip here, it like falls down. Maybe. This is the treetops, I guess. Tree but the trees are right there. The trees are right there. Maybe they're not right there. Maybe that's the treetops. Hmm. So there's like there's like a cliff here and then like a cliff here. That brings it up to... <laughs> and the trees are stick, 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 push. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weird, right? Where did that cliff come from? Mm. Yeah, just some nitpicky stuff. Okay, sure. And the cup. Okay, so the T-Rex is super heavy. But is it like pounding its like, heels into the ground? Like, kaboom! Crunch, and crunch. Then it's it's going to ruin his legs. And it, it's like a predator, right? Mm -hmm. So like, it's wouldn't a prey be like... I hear stomping. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a T-Rex there. Let's, <laughs> let's leave. <laughs> That's right. So this has to be intimidation tactics. Yeah, I guess so. So if the, if the T-Rex is truly hunting, it's going to get up on its like toes. Tip, on the and, tippy toes. And tippy toes and like quiet. Gentle. Itself, like, yeah. oh. But if it's like, hey, the humans is out I'll there. I'll give a fuck. Whatever. Kabam! Chomp! Kabam! Chomp! Chomp! It must be because, I mean, it's so loud. I guess it, it could be. It, it could be that it knows something's nearby, okay. so it stomps to try to like rustle them out of the bushes. Ooh, that's cool. So you go stomp, 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 stomp. Well, not getting on that fast, but stomp, stomp. Right. And then, and then like a bunny runs, and you're like, ah, oh, there you go. Okay, okay. Chase is on. I like that. I like that. I also like. I really like that. Maybe. Okay. How heavy is a T Rex? God damn. She's thick. She, She's thick, and she feel big. Right. This. To me, this is like the ultimate scene of sh that shows the special effects of Jurassic Park being just fantastic. Like you get this sense of scale and scarediness, and it just feels like the T-Rex is next to the vehicles and is right. powerful. I don't always get that feeling with modern computer graphics and special effects. Right. It just feels, it just felt, yeah, man. Special effects, animatronics, back in the day, the 90s movies felt different. It and felt it, yeah. more, I mean, clearly not real. The dinosaur. Right. But it, feels like it's actually there there right yeah it looks right looks yeah that just the light the way it light is on it and the, and the wetness and the whew, and the way it moved mm. crazy so after those t-rex attacks lexi doesn't turn off the light this this entire sequence is her fault like it's just her fault keep absolutely still this vision is based on movement how is a paleontologist going to know that by Absol looking at no rocks? Way. Absolutely no way. No way right? <laughs> Absolutely no way. You know, like, look at the skeleton. Its movement is, its vision is based on movement. How? Absolutely no way. Yet still, I mean, every, everybody knows it. Like, you can go up to a kid and be like, freeze! And he'll do like, there's no T-Rex around. There's no T-Rex, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh no. Oh. This is like this is the worst thing you could do. It's coming closer. <laughs> Mark? Lexi, please. Turn it off. Please turn it off. You still have time. Oh god, that's the worst. That's the worst thing you could have done. You deserve that. 
don't think they ever Jimmy's got it off. They never get it off. So Why, I, none of that had to happen. So I kind of understand once the light is on, Lexi's panicking. And it's hard to do simple things when you're that yeah. adrenaline up and you're so cognitively compromised by just the situation. But why did she turn it on to begin with? That's right. What are you, what are you doing looking through this crate? There's heavy things in there. Leave them off. I can, <sighs> flashlight. I can't. I can't. It, it's like nighttime. It's scary. You see some shit happening outside. It's very unnerving to be in the dark. Like, oh. I want the light on. I want to see what it is. So from her perspective, it's just dark outside the windows. You can't really see what's going on, what's going on. So you shine a light on it and you feel like, okay, I have information about what's going on. Right. And then that ended up badly. It ended up kind of as worse as, as the worst <laughs> yeah. way it could have been. But like, I, I get it's hard to manipulate like small switches and dials, like try mm -hmm. to manipulate your phone while you're freaking out. It's very mm -hmm. challenging. But like, she could just point the the flashlight to the ground, like just, just put right, it to the right. ground. That's right. Just chunk, or just like shove it against your stomach and like covers up the light. Like right. flashing it in the T Rex eyes is like the worst thing you could have done. That's right. So you couldn't get the mechanism. Like, what's going on here? I can't figure it out. It's these little things hard. Yeah. So just, just point it to the ground. Point it to the ground. Yeah. Lexi. Lexi. She's so smart, but panic. Panic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, lesson learned. If you survive. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> She won't be naturally selected. That's right. According to Ian Malcolm, she deserves to die. That makes it. Jesus, Ian That's Malcolm. Brutal. brutal. The kids. These are uh, these are the scene where Nedrick is taking ne Nedri, the, Nedri. Nedri with a Nedri is taking the dinosaur DNA. Um, I think there's he was ordered or requested. He was he's paid to take fifteen. Mm -hmm. That right? right. They don't show all fifteen, but a how scene. many? How many do they have? So they got Gallimimus. That's one. Tyrannosaurus Rex, Two. Velociraptor, and then we see, okay, Metriacanthosaurus. Okay, sure. Four. Stegosaurus. Hi. And then this is a repeat. So we've got five that they're shown on camera. Okay. And then we know we got... We definitely saw Brontosaurus earlier Brontosaurus. On. Or Brachiosaurus? Brontosaurus? One of those. The long neck guy. Yeah, Triceratops. Triceratops. So maybe Iguanodon. Iguanodon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the thing with the, like, the long neck, the thing that comes out of the back of the head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. What about the Spitty Boys? Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus. That's nine. So, uh, yeah, there's, they said they were... Hammond! Gonna... Boom! <laughs> so the, the corporate espionage guy, Dodson, wanted 15. Yeah. So we're missing at least six. six. We're missing six, yeah. So if anybody knows the other dinosaurs, let us know. Because we don't know. Can't remember off the top of our head. Hmm. So just after this emotion, <laughs> just after this Treaty Rex attack... Dr. Grant has saved both kids, I guess, multiple times. Lexi. Lexi Lexi is no chill. She says some brutal stuff right away. Ah. We just fell out of a out of a Ford Explorer from the tree. We almost got bit in half. What are you and Ellie gonna do now if you don't have to pick up dinosaur bones anymore? I don't know, I guess. We like barely survived and the kid's like, so you're unemployed? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you're a failure now? What's the next step in your life? <laughs> like, give me, like, give me a minute. Give me a minute to relax. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. They're in a crisis situation. This is survival. And she's like, what's your career? What's your next move? How are you going to pay your mortgage? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, I just survived right a T-Rex attack, Lexi. I'm and trying it's to your survive. Fault. And it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> that's, why, that's why he doesn't come down on her. She's like, you have problems that we should think about. Yeah. What were you doing with the flashlight? <laughs> <laughs> but we did say that maybe paleontologists are not now extinct. They're now going to be boom. They might have a boom. We might have a boom. So you got to go all around the world to find all the different dinosaurs for all the exhibits that people want to make. That's right. Whew. So maybe he shouldn't have thrown away his little Velociraptor claw. You get another one. He'll be rich. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he'll be fine. What am I talking about? Unless he actually is unemployed after this. <laughs> he'll always remember this moment like, I barely survived. And then reality hit me. Yeah. I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could. the easy thing to do for him is go home, write a book. That's right. About his experience. That thing would sell. I think it, did they mention that in one of the sequels? I don't know. Where he like, right, maybe he goes on a speaking tour. I can't remember. I would definitely write her out. <laughs> or, or the book would be half about the T-Rex fight. And it's like, <laughs> this girl, her flashlight, she wove it around. That's right. This, you know, was she all there? We don't know. 
Wishy on the Dino's side. Let's watch Control. This place, I wanted to show them something that wasn't an illusion. Something that was real. Something that they could see and touch. I mean, I mean mission the, accomplished. <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> the dinosaurs are touching them. They're touching the insides of the dinosaurs. Oh, that, that's, that's right. Not devoid of merit. But you can't think through this one, John. You have to feel it. I mean, what? Like, this is crisis. That's right. And now is the time to think. Now's the time to think through it and get make the right decision. Just to go well, by feels. No. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. Having Ned to do was a mistake. That's obvious. We're over dependent on automation. I can see that now. <laughs> Creation is an act of sheer will. I mean, he's not wrong. Does should Jurassic Park be given up on? Is it not viable? So I, I, I think the mistake was hiring Nedry mm -hmm. and or not paying him enough. Right. Mismanaging Nedry. It seems like, if not for that, I think it would have been okay. Because like, mm -hmm. like it seems like you'd had, they really needed this confluence of all of these bad things together. So you needed to have Nedry be upset with his salary such mm -hmm. that he was okay to go for the corporate espionage. Mm -hmm. You needed to have the weather be a... It, like a, it was a hurricane, tropical storm, like yeah. at the same time. And even if those two things happened and like all the power lines go down, the dinosaurs get out, it's kind of not that bad because they're all confined to the island. Right. It's really the third thing at the same time is that the Jeeps are out there, the tour right. is going on. Mm -hmm. It's like all these three things together combined is like catastrophic mm -hmm. failure. Yeah. But if any one of those was not there, like I think it's recoverable. Right. And I think this park would be super popular and people will want to see it. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird that he's talking about it while his grandchildren are out in danger. Yeah, that's kind of, that's pretty cool. That's pretty weird. But he's not wrong. That's right. Yeah, you shouldn't give up on this. For the sake of humanity, you really should push forward. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, secure the kids, everyone alive, new right. procedures, but keep going. Keep going, yeah. Next time it'll be flawless. That's right, it's baby. Still the flea circus. It's all an illusion. When we have control again. You've never had control. That's the illusion. I mean, first off, not illusion. There's real dinosaurs <laughs> running around the park. Actually, she had her hand in dino shit, and she touched a side of a trike. Like, she knows. She, she knows, knows it's not yes. real. She Actually, knows. knows. It is real. It is real. It's not an illusion. It's not an illusion. And then he, they did have control. When the, when the fences were on and the cages were up. That's right. Like, they had control. They didn't mm -hmm. have perfect control. They were struggling with the velociraptors a little bit. But, like, it's pretty under control. And the failure mode of if everyone leaves the island, all the dinosaurs die, like, that's in the, control. The lysine contingency. I guess the, the only thing they didn't have under control was Nedry. <laughs> like, the, as a human. That's right. And that's all due to Hammond being a bit of a cheapskate. That's right. So get that under control, Hammond, and this might work. Yeah. But I made a mistake, too. I didn't have enough respect for that power, and it's out now. The only thing that matters now are the people we love. Alan and Lex and Tim, John, they're out there where people are dying. I mean, that's true, but I'm going to blame Nedry. I blame Nedry. I blame Nedry by proxy because Hammond is cheaping out. Can you imagine there's like this multi-billionaire like, island and then you're getting paid like 40k? Like 40k, you know, good. Like, this place is billions of dollars. That's right. You start to feel penny pinched and that's right. pissed like, off. What the hell? You're going to yeah. make huge profits and I'm going to sit on the sidelines. That's yeah. right. So Nedry might actually have a point. He went about it the wrong way, you know, and he's a slob, but they have a point. But also, Dr. Sadler here is totally right. Like, people are dying. Let's care about that right now. True. Don't worry about, don't, don't worry about the park right now. We got kids on the line getting eaten. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum, yum. Why did I say it that way? Ugh. Chomp, chomp, chomp. <laughs> this is Ian Malcolm. What are you gonna say? Sexy scientist. Sexy scientist. Yeah. Did he need to open his shirt? Yes, no, he did. It's a, yes, bit, he did. it's a little bit warm, so bit you know, warm, yeah. Take the liberty. Yeah. Nobody needs me to do anything right now. I'm right. just chilling. In fact, wasn't his leg? His leg was in either broken or in That's serious it. problems. I think his pants should be off. Honestly. Like they should have cut him off. But that so they, is right because that's that's like one of the first things you you remove the person's mm -hmm. pants so you can assess the damage. Right. So, and he's not going to put a new pair of pants on because his leg is still in bad he shape. He wouldn't even have a second pair of pants. So he's probably going to be wearing like a towel or something. 
This yeah. is a little unrealistic. That's right. You should be more naked. You should be more naked. You heard it here. That's right. Our official stance. Jurassic Park is unrealistic because we don't see Goldblum schlong. Ooh, nine out of ten now. <laughs> So this is the thing that I found most unreasonable in this movie. It's this buffet. Like, it's too expensive. Like, if this is their everyday buffet, like, they could not have been in the black. I mean, could you imagine Nedry coming in? That's right. Like, what the f*** is with what the buffet? The you make me pay for this $2 snicker bars, but you get this buffet? Like, what yeah. the f***? Yeah. It's so expensive. Like, appreciate me, please. I wonder if this could have been avoided with like the whole like park failure. What if it could have been avoided with like an employee of the month? Just bam, hey Nedry, we like you. Bam, there you go. Appreciate it. You know, it. maybe. Maybe. Maybe he gets his own personal buffet instead of ham and hogging all the gains here. That's right. The gains. <laughs> the mountain of sugar. That's right. The gains. Oh, when I was a kid, this was awesome. It's just a free reign of the buffet. Ooh, the fantasy. That's right. Wait, was it worth a harrowing near death experiences? Yes. I mean, heck yeah. Heck yeah, look at it this. makes the food taste better. It does. And you get whatever you want. You got the fruit stuff. Mm -hmm. You got the chocolate mm -hmm. thing. You got maybe custard. Custardy or something. something. And this is like tarty fruit. something. Then you got all the, okay, salad, whatever. You have all these things that Lexi will eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, what is Hammond doing? Oh, going. It's a bare bone staff right now. What's he doing? That's right. Who would he have been feeding with us? Besides himself. He's like, I want all the cakes out. Because I might have a slice of some indeterminate of them, cake. I don't know. Whatever. I own the <laughs> island. Do it. Do it. Pay, should, should we pay Nedry? No. No. He has Nedry, that's your problem. You negotiated. Problem. It's done. <laughs> done. Oh, yeah. So this, the power procedure is when Dr. Um, Sadler turns on the power in the, I don't know, the shed. It felt really realistic to me, but I was unsure why we needed to prime it. You've got to pump up the primer handle in order to get the charge. It's large, flat, and gray. All right, here I go, okay? One, two, three, four. Charge. There's a round green button which says push to close. Push it. Bam! So methodical, just flip them. Flip them. Okay, so my question was, so you have, she had to prime it to build up some kind of charge, then close the switch with the button, and then turn on the individual. Why can't you just close the switch? Why, what was the, what's with the primer deal? Oh, yeah, so so I I think this is a real thing. Is it a real thing? Depending on the circuit, what it needs, sometimes you have to pump. And so okay. the pump is if you need to give it an initial voltage, and then once it starts going, then it can start going. Okay. But if you say if your wall socket is like 110 volts, mm -hmm. if you have a circuit that you need to plug into that requires 300 volts, then that 100 is not big enough to power up and turn on the thing. So mm -hmm. in that scenario, if you only need 300 for like a little bit to start it, mm -hmm. then you can come down to the regular 110. But then what you can do is you can pump up the voltage for like the initial kick on and then it runs okay. on its own. Mm, that's weird. Okay, I see it. It, ha it happens sometimes. It happens. Okay, let's look into this how power works but i guess that makes sense if you need that initial spike in voltage maybe give it that little boost mm -hmm. and if it's if you can create that manually even better because it's a manual turn on right you're not reliant on like if the power lines are down outside then you can't turn on anything else no you can that's do it right, right here just manually that's, pump right. It up. that's right okay okay felt realistic but yeah. okay yeah okay this i'm going to call it right now this is the most natural marketing in, in the real world, most natural marketing of merchandise from a movie ever. That's right. You could put the real merchandise that kids are going to get. I had one. In the movie as an advertisement. And it actually makes sense makes within sense. the movie because it's the gift shop. That's right. Because it's towards the end of the tour, <laughs> towards the end of the movie. Yeah. You would walk through the gift shop, which is exactly what's here. Yeah. You don't have to like get a commercial and like put kids in it. Like you just actually have the products here in the movie. <laughs> in the movie. I mean, brilliant. Super smart. I mean, I saw these pajamas when I was a kid. I had a little Tyrannus. I had a little yeah. uh, T-Rex. No, yeah. T-Rex? I think, I think I had a little T-Rex of this uh, stuffed animal tape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Straight from the movie. Awesome. 
It's like, here's the product, like official licensing. Get this one, no others. <laughs> and you're like, why are they doing product placement in the movie? Wait, I want it, it's this. the gift shop. It's the gift shop. That makes sense. Like, that's actually in the movie. It's, very, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Super smart. So at the end, the Velociraptor opens the door and it's just like the ideal scenario for a Velociraptor. You sure the third one's contained? Yes. Unless they figured out how to open doors. Yup. <laughs> I done did it. That's a dino hand. Of all the possible doorknobs, the ones they chose are these. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that fit a dinosaur hand. <laughs> like if it had been like a turny knob, like where you like grab yeah. on the outside, like a shape mm -hmm. like an apple. I don't think a dinosaur can do this. Right, they would, because the dinosaur also doesn't know if, how to open it or if it right. can open right. So even if it could open it, it wouldn't quickly get to that solution mm -hmm. if it was a regular doorknob because it can't really grip. Right. This, this is kind of like the worst case scenario handle they could have had. It is, yeah. It you know, is. Like, like, like sometimes you see these like step on these things on the on mm -hmm. the bottom of the door. You like drag with oh, your yeah, foot. Yeah. Like you don't touch the door with your hands. Keep your hands clean. Super smart. That's what can do that. That's right. And that would be that would be weird. That would this is like the yeah. You're right. This is like the ideal handle for, for a dinosaur for the claw. Hey, man, I bet they're the cheap model. model. <laughs> cheap one piece. Yeah. yeah. We need to get the anti-dino doorknob. <laughs> like, no, no, no. We don't want anti-dino doorknobs. <laughs> like, something designed pretty much just for this one parking. No, 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 no. Too expensive. Okay. That's also the the door into the control room. Mm -hmm. oh, I guess we don't see it here. Isn't a doorknob. It's actually like a computerized chunk thing. So it's like... Just do that. <laughs> just do that. Yeah. So here in the kitchen, the Velociraptor is hunting the few kids. Look at the shape of the dinosaur's head and where the eyes are placed. It felt weird. So this dinosaur, this Velociraptor is a predator. It's a hunter, but its eyes look like super far to the mm -hmm. outside, which I think is a trait of prey animals. Mm -hmm. And so like, like predator animals, things that need to hunt, tend to have eyes that are forward facing mm -hmm. because that way you can see distances very well because you use the parallax. And so animals that don't need to hunt, they don't need to like focus on targets. They need to be aware of the surroundings. Their eyes are on the sides of their heads. So this looks like this looks like when the Velociraptor is looking forward, it mm -hmm. looks like it could barely see whatever it's looking at. Right. So yeah, that's that's weird, right? Because maybe maybe the Velociraptor is both. Maybe it's a predator, but also a prey of bigger animals so mm. it kind of does both weird right and so if we look up aquatic eyes mm -hmm. their eyes are also weird like like when i say when i say mm -hmm. eyes to the outside versus eyes forward this is all for mm -hmm. like land-based land animals, animals. Yeah. so sp good, good example sperm yeah. whale so sperm whales definitely a predator but yeah. its eyes are way on the side yeah so i wonder a good picture here my hunch my hunch is that this is because it lives in a 3D environment. So mm -hmm. it needs to be able to see all around and in all sorts of directions. Right. So sperm whale is a well-known predator that kills things. Right. But it's in the ocean. So kind of different. So it goes up and down. It's not just worried mm -hmm. about flat land. It needs to worry right. about up and down, left, right, all the whole, the whole four pie everywhere. Right. And mm -hmm. so maybe velociraptors, mm -hmm. when they existed back then, like, yeah, they're stuck in the ground, but mm -hmm. they also need to be worried about about like flying dinosaurs mm -hmm. or even just oh, tall dinosaurs. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. So it would make sense then for the velociraptors to have side eyes. Mm -hmm. But certainly modern predators like like us, uh -huh. we got eyes forward, we're apex predator. Oh yeah. Um, owls, Yep. they're definitely predators. They look forward, they care they about depth. They lock it on things. Right. Fascinating. Um, cats, definite predators. They're real they're good hunters. Yep, definitely forward Top. facing eyes uh -huh. versus goats. Very side eye. It's like it's like the eyes are connected to, not to the front of their head, to like to the sides of their head. Yeah. So if we look back at the boss raptor side of head, side of head kind of looks like prey animal, but maybe it has to contend with three dimensional attacks, so yeah. it needs to be able to see out there. Yeah, and that's the trade off. That's trade off. Yeah, maybe because it certainly look. Other than that, it looks like a predator. Sharp oh, teeth, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Strong jaw. Yeah, and then sharp claws. It's like when we're, you can almost look like behind its head, mm -hmm. 
In which case, if we could still see its eyes, then, <laughs> then it's right. not looking forward. It's not looking forward so much, yeah. Interesting. I wonder how accurate that is to a real Velociraptor skull. Or if, no idea. I don't know. Yeah. Could you imagine a T-Rex with its eyes like straight forward? It's like an apex predator. Could that be weird? Yeah. So Ellie, Ellie Sadler, Dr. Ellie Sadler, I like that she's contributing. Absolutely. Like save everyone, hold the door. She's sitting at the worst part of it. It's the worst part of the door possible. So there's no, yeah. So the hinge is right here at this, oh, the hinge. Yep. <laughs> and you're going to get the most torque on the outside of the door. Mm -hmm. She's really close to the hinge. So, so her torque that she's contributing to this holding the Velociraptors back is actually minuscule compared to what yeah. Dr. Yeah. Grant's doing. So he needs to get under his legs. She needs to That's get right. under his right. legs. While he's pushing high, she pushes low. Put as much weight out to the edge of that door. Mm -hmm. And I think actually if you were in this situation, you might intuitively do I it. I think you'd feel it automatically. Yeah. yeah. So... You'd feel like I'm pushing against the door, but it's also not pushing back very much. Right, that's right. And as you move to the outside of the door, you feel that push back means you're, yeah. you're doing something. Yeah. So just a little physics quip right there. If you ever need to keep the uh, police out, <laughs> that's how you do it. So your friend can uh, mm? Okay. <laughs> so where does the T-Rex come from? Let's watch. I think it was when I was a teenager, maybe, that I was watching this movie a bunch of times. And the first, you know, first several times, like, yeah, fucking yeah, the T Rex. T Rex. But then a friend of mine was like, where did the T Rex come from? Like, okay, so let's, let's go through here. They're surrounded. We got a Velociraptor here. Our heroes are surrounded. Velociraptor here, surrounded. So now our, our heroes are looking at. The Velociraptor forward right here. About to pounce, about to pounce. T-Rex in. So where did this T-Rex come huh. from? Let's see it at the end here. He had to have come through this opening mm -hmm. while they're looking through the opening. I see it. I see what you're saying. <laughs> so, so the T-Rex comes out of nowhere, but it's exactly where they would have been looking. That's right. <laughs> Well, you know that like that gorilla video where the people bounce in the basketballs and like, count the number of, count number so of bounces bad. and the gorilla walks through. Yeah. Maybe they're so focused on the velociraptors that, that they just can't, they just couldn't see it. Not, it sounds absurd. But no, like, no, 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 no I, I, I like it because like when you watch that gorilla basketball mm -hmm. thing, they're like, count the bounces and there's no threat to you. But mm -hmm. like when you're face to face with a velociraptor, like you're yeah. locked into this thing. It's, right. trying, it's trying to hunt me, like, yeah. locked in. So the T-Rex would be a distraction weirdly um but the the other velociraptors in in the velociraptor crew because there's one back here and i think there's more so they form like a triangle around yeah. it so they should have every angle covered right so like he, one of them should be like yeah. t-rex yeah so she should see the t-rex coming in and be like let's get out of here what the hell not worth it these yeah. four humans no but yeah they the velociraptors screwed up the humans probably didn't see it they get lucky let's watch it one more time What was your, your theory about sneak oh, mode that's right, that's right. versus because, versus cut like boom boom? Because it came in. Not only did it come in from weird angles, so like mm -hmm. meaning weird meaning like in your line of sight, like <laughs> it's like right there. It came in quiet, like right. it, we did not right. hear it stomping, right? Right. And so my thought was like it knew that these people were there because it hears them screaming, mm -hmm. shouting. So like come in sneaky, come in tippy toes, you know, get close as you can. Whereas the night before. It had attacked both of the the explorers, and it was like, "There's nothing in here. Like this sucks. Whatever. I'm like stomping away. I'm I'm angry." Right. right, right. So or, or, or 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 even better, even better. So so it's like I attacked these two these mm -hmm. two Ford explorers, and I know there that things came out. I saw them run away, but I lost track of them. So maybe if I like stomp stomp mm -hmm. real hard, it'll scare them out of the bushes, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, "Oh, there you are. Tom, Tom, Tom. Yeah." So it sounds, it looks like, sounds like, looks like the T-Rex has two modes, a stomp mode for different reasons, anti uh -huh. intimidation or getting the rabbits out of the bushes uh -huh. versus sneaky mode where all quiet. 
And I think like he's, she is on her tippy toes. The heel gentle, is up. Heel soft is up. pads, pads only. Yeah. Pads only. So just nice and sneaky. Yep. Yeah. So what are some behaviors about the T-Rex here? Mm. And that's it. That's the end. Mm. What a movie. Classic movie. This is the movie where we learned that T-Rex have motion vision and Dilophosaurus have the poison spray mm -hmm. and the Velociraptors hunt in packs. It's super smart. Yeah, they can open doors. Learned all this stuff as a kid. Learned reading all the dino books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we did learn that reproduction requires a man and a woman. Yep, 1990. That's not my, that's not our opinion. That's yeah. that's this Jurassic Park. That's what that's they right. said here. Two women can't copulate. Right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Two women can't copulate. Not, not our opinion. And there's no asexual reproduction in nature ever. Fuck, that's right. That, that, that does happen. <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> happen. And apparently sex change in frogs and different things is real. Oh, that's thing. it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just, the example in this movie is a real thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, what happens now? It kind of feels like this has been resolved, but I guess the island is still out there. And, you know, there's more movies coming up. So Can you imagine uh, Jurassic Park, like 1.5? It's like clean up before they set up the other one. And it's just a bunch of like dinosaur carcasses. Like, what do we do with the bodies? <laughs> That's right. Can you get lysine in nature if you eat the right meat? Oh, I have no idea. I have no, I have no idea. Because I assume there's mammals on the island. And, and birds and mammals on the island for the dinosaurs to, to eat. Ah, so much like a cat is an obligate carnivore because they need some type mm -hmm. of amino acid that they mm -hmm. can't generate their own bodies. So they have to eat meat. Mm -hmm. Could be the same for dinosaurs. And if Could they can be. get a large enough source of lysine, then they're they actually might, good to go. Might, they might be able to survive. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting idea for a movie because in, in Jurassic Park 2, they go to like Isle of Sornar or something, which is a separate. Just a backup place. A backup place. But we've never, Isle of Nublar, we've never learned... Like, what was the fate of the, the dinosaurs and the Jurassic Park? I guess in some of the later movies we go see it. Oh, I'll have to, we'll have to watch them again. Okay. Cool. cool. See, see you guys time. next time.